In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I was asked to show how to make narration appear scrolling on the screen. When you have a speaker and you want their words to scroll while they're talking. Uh, this was for a church context, so we're going to assume that that's where we're at and we'll use this clip as an example. Uh, they could be reciting the Declaration of Independence or reading a poem, whatever, but if you want to scroll the words while they're speaking, what's one way to do that? Well, I'm going to take this clip and drag it down on track number one. And so I have this gal who's going to speak. Now then what I want to do is obviously I'd want to put the words on track number two. So I'm going to take my title and take my default title and drag it down to track two. And now what I'd like to do is stretch it out a little bit and we're going to take some of what she might say as if she were quoting scripture. So I'm going to go ahead and edit the title and we'll pause the video. And now I have a large chunk of text that will scroll on the screen. Uh, what I need to do is keyframe the text to make it move from the bottom to the top. So I'm going to click on the right arrow on the text component and we're going to deal with the position keyframe. First thing I need to do is move my text off the screen to the bottom and I'll simply drag and drop. And then I'll set a keyframe on position by clicking the diamond in the position value. And so when we start it will be off the screen. Now the next thing I need to do is obviously move it up. I'll move my playhead over a certain amount of time. We'll guess maybe 18 seconds or so. And then I'll move the text up. And we'll actually move it off the screen to the top. And a little bit more looks like. All right, now we're off. And that's at a keyframe over here. So when we go back to the beginning of our, of our clip and we go ahead and play it, the text will scroll from the bottom to the top. And that's a nice way to do something like this. However, there's a way to be a little more classy. And I was asked to do that. If you want to control the speed of the text, all you need to do is move the second keyframe. The closer you move it to the first, the faster the words will move. The farther apart, the slower they will move. Uh, I'll save that. I'll click on OK here. But there's an issue here. Uh, the person who was asking me about this does not want the text to start at the bottom. They want it to start slightly up from the bottom. And they want it to disappear before it gets to the top. So in order to do this, we're going to need to use a mask. So I'm going to take my clip of the young gal. And uh, we're going to go back to our media room here. And I'll drag a second copy of it. On track number three, I'm going to sandwich the scrolling text between the two copies. And then I need to make sure I'm on the third one. And we're going to punch a hole in it by using a mask. I'll click on my designer and my mask designer. And I have designed a mask myself. And I'll show you how to do that at the end of the video if you need to. It has a white bar at the top and a white bar at the bottom and double click on the mask that will apply it to my video track number three. I think I need to enlarge it just a bit. It's a bit too small. So when I go ahead and preview this and try to play it, the text will come in not from the bottom because this is max masked out and it will disappear before it gets to the top because this is also masked out. You don't see it. I'll click on OK. And so now I have my final result, which is what I'm looking for. Uh, we'll go ahead and play it in the larger screen. And our text is scrolling in. And we can go ahead and have her pretend to recite this and it will appear on the screen. And if you have more text than a simple paragraph, you can simply add more obviously in your text tool. You can do that in the Tyler room or you can have multiple titles. It doesn't matter. In this postscript to this tutorial, I'd like to show you how I created the mask that we used a few moments ago. 
You may recall that we clicked on the lower track, the second copy, track number three, and I clicked on Designer and then Mask Designer. If you have an earlier version of PowerDirector, you'll find it under the PIP Designer. And then all I did was when I got into my Mask Designer is I loaded this mask, which came from an image I created. Let me show you how I did that. I will cancel out of here. And you can use a program like Paint.net. Uh, I used the Photoshop Elements. And in Elements, to create a mask like that, you simply click on File, and then New, and I'll click on a blank file. You pick the width and height to be equal to your finished product in PowerDirector. So mine's 1920 by 1080. Then I click on OK. I wanted to make sure I did it with a transparent background. Then the next step, all you need to do is click on your rectangle tool. And I'm going to have my color in my, uh, in my option be white down here. I'll just draw a rectangle around the top about as far up as I want to go. And draw another one around the bottom. And now I have it so that this will be my mask. One bar at the top, one bar at the bottom. And then I click File. I do Save As. And then I'm just going to uh, save it as a PNG file. And here I'll call it uh, New Mask. And we'll save the file. So I'll close the program. And we'll go back to Designer, Mask Designer. And then I'll load my image. And then I'll navigate to the place where my file is. And I have one here called New Mask, and I simply click on that. And it says use the Alpha Channel. I will say yes, click on OK, and here is my second mask that I created. And so I have this option that I can use. So that's a trick on how to create the mask that we used as part of this particular tutorial. Mm -hmm.